Hi, and welcome to lesson 12. This is the first lesson on two lessons about blind quantum computation. We're going to exactly explain what blind in this sense means. We're going to begin with the step one, though, that is on classical cloud and quantum computation. So classical cloud computing is a new way of handling common computer tasks, and it comes with numerous benefits. The first one is cost effectiveness. Imagine that you are a small business that's trying to set up a remote storage on a server. First, you have to pay for the server, which is not cheap. Then you have to pay for the labor of setting it up. And then you also have to pay for maintenance of the server. On the other hand, if you use the cloud, you just have to pay a simple subscription fee, which is quite often smaller than the actual price of setting up your own server. Number two is scalability. Normally, we talk about scaling things up. But in this sense, it in goes both ways. It's scaling up as well as scaling down. Imagine that the storage that you buy for your uh, small server is not enough. The solution is to buy larger uh, storage. But what if after that, uh, the needs of your clients change and the storage demands go down? You already spent money on the larger storage and now it's sitting there idle without being used. With the cloud, you can just simply, if you want to scale up, pay for a higher subscription tier, or if you want to scale down, you drop to a lower subscription tier. Also, cloud is reliable. Large companies that provide cloud service have numerous redundancies and way more resources than any of us or any of small businesses could have. And also, maintenance is hassle-free because it's outsourced to these large companies providing these cloud services. And finally, it's globally accessible. You can virtually use it from anywhere. So why do we need a quantum cloud? All of the previous benefits will also apply in the quantum cloud too. But one big difference is that uh, classical and quantum computers are very different in terms of their availability. Quantum computers are very scarce. There's only a handful of large or uh, new companies that run quantum computers, such as IBM, Google, IonQ. They are astronomically expensive to build, they are extremely fragile and very expensive to maintain. Also, they require expert knowledge to operate. And in order to take full use of these machines, we will demonstrate in this lesson that we need a quantum cloud. But before that, let's see how we can interact with quantum computers through the classical cloud. Right now, Quantum computers can be viewed simply as a new service provided through the classical cloud. Large companies such as IBM make their quantum devices available to general public. So here we have our classical users or students or researchers who interact with these devices through the classical internet. Usual way of typical flow of interacting with quantum computers is the following. First, we compose a quantum circuit that we would like to execute on one of these quantum computers. This is often done in a Python-based SDK given to us by the service provider. Once we have the quantum circuit, we can choose a suitable device. If our circuit is too large, we also need to pick a device with a larger number of qubits. If we want to use good error rates, or if the queue length is too long, let's say we want to run our simulation very quickly, all of these um, affect our choice of a suitable quantum device. Number three, th we classically encode the quantum circuit and then we send it to the provider. Also, we don't want to run this only once. Typically, we have to run it a number of times. So we have to specify to the provider how many times the quantum circuit should be executed on their device. Finally, the provider executes our quantum circuit on the real machine and gener the generated classical data is sent back to us. Benefits of the classical cloud are the following. Anyone can use quantum computers. Researchers can test their ideas quickly. Their ideas can be quickly implemented and tested. Also, it's an indispensable education tool. Before, quantum mechanics and quantum computing was this spooky action at a distance, but no more. These machines give us a real tangible devices that we can play with and experiment with. Finally, the effect on publicity is very difficult to enumerate. 
recently quantum computers have been um, entering the public domain and public interest in a huge way. And this was mainly thanks to the cloud services provided by these big companies. And number two, classical cloud is already there. It comes with all the benefits that we talked about before, allowing all of us to use the quantum devices. However, there are some limitations which we are going to address in this lesson. The first limitation is the lack of privacy, often referred to as blindness. The service provider knows exactly what computation we are trying to run and on what input. Ideally, this is not a problem, but sometimes this could pose, pose an issue. For example, if you, are, if you are some business that has a new business idea and would like to keep this um, business idea secret, then you would also like to hide this from the provider that runs these quantum devices. Currently, using the classical cloud, there's no way of doing it. We will see that with quantum cloud, we can hide the input, the computation, as well as the output. The second limitation is the integrity of data. What we are referring to here is that we have no way of verifying the output of the quantum device or the quantum computer in general. For some problems, for example, factoring of large prime numbers, this is no problem. All we have to do is we take the two numbers, the two prime factors, and then we, um, uh, we multiply them together to check if we get the correct answer. But this is not true for general universal quantum computation or quantum simulations. So it would be nice for clients to have the capability of verifying that the quantum service provider is following our instructions. We will see that this is indeed possible with the quantum cloud. And we are going to begin in the next step.